clobbering times. Uh, yeah. yes, I have to add the S to there because it used to be clobbering time, but now I am a. Sorry about that. I'm now, of course, covered times since I moved over here to YouTube. And I want to uh, always a big, wonderful shout out to the great, the magnificent Stone Loki for that cool uh, intro outro he made for me there. Um, I love it. And he was just such a so nice to make that for me. I, I would, I'm just, uh, I have to thank him every guy. time. Yeah, I love Loki. Yeah. He's such a cool dude. And, and uh, of course, um, he has taken me into to his wonderful Valhalla with a great group there. I, of course, now I'm a regular on his show on Tuesday nights. And I'll be there tonight um, talking about, well, the, usually the events of the day, a lot, we'll, we'll, you know, a lot of different things. We'll talk some comics and different things like that because there's uh, a lot of stuff coming out now, a lot of announcements to comment on there. And so, again, uh, shout out to Valhalla. I'll be on tonight at 7 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time. Um, we're, we're going early today, early for us, but not early for everyone, of course. Um, <laughs> because I wanted a chance to hang out with my good buddy, the great problem being, uh, this is the, the Clobby and Probby show. And, and I know Clobby and Probby, that's it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, love, I love that. Oh, oh, I love it. And uh, I just want a chance to hang out and talk. It could be, uh, what is as the kids call them, a chill stream? Because they didn't have anything. Uh, you know, when it comes to Blake Seven, they're only, I don't know, I guess you could come up with topics revolving around it, but I didn't really think of any because I'm lazy like that, I guess. Yeah. Well, I mean, the same here. <laughs> I mean, it's, we can sort of wallow in the world, in, in the universe of Blake Seven and just sort of go. <sighs> and it's a big one. And it is one that is, of course, there's there's much conversation to be had on it. And what will what you know what I will start out with. And of course, again, uh, thank you for being here, the great Lord Thoth, my good buddy, who's not only um, a Blake Seven buddy of ours uh, and a buddy of, of the chan of our channels and the many channels that we frequent. Um, he is a uh, like me, a big comic books geek, and he loves my beloved Legion of Superheroes. And dude, I promise we're going to get that Legion of Superheroes. Uh, show done again. The top 10 legionnaires when the, that 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 idiot Carlos had to bail on me Saturday, but don't worry, I'll be mean to him about it when we get him back on the show. Little bastard, uh, <laughs> goddamn gigolos, what he is, but uh, at least he bailed on me for gigolo reasons. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, nah, I love him, and uh, we will so we'll be doing that again, uh, soon. Um, but uh, let's see, I, I want to thank the wonderful Stephanie Janizek for being on with me last night. Uh, talking all things. She is my Star Wars insider. She has all kinds, I mean, a lot of inside tracks into Star Wars. And we had a lot of fun last night talking about a lot of the Star Wars news and things like that. She's uh, amazing. She has a great channel. Of course, there is a link to it in my descriptions below, as there is for many of my uh, the channels of my very good friends. Please check all of those channels out. And uh, I want to, oh, Captain Trek has popped in. And, and M, I, I always forgive me for never going really to be able to pronounce this this name. In, I can't pronounce it, but I like it anyway. I'm, I'm presuming him. I don't know if uh, M is a him or not, but it doesn't matter because it's very that person is very cool. And uh, I, I called him. Okay, <laughs> that's the correct pronunciation, is it? I don't know. I, I believe so. I mean, <laughs> can, can, uh, can correct me. On that. I think that's a good me. idea, actually. Like, because has uh, thrown in a, a question. Maybe we can just get the uh, chat to throw us some questions on, on the Oh, yeah, that's that's the thing. What I'll do is, in fact, I'll start out. Well, uh, I'll get to, to, oh, Eastland Burkholder, another great friend. I, what I'll do is I'll, um, Hello. I think it's always good to kind of set up Blake 7 a little bit because, again, most people, and we've done a couple of uh, shows where we talked about it, uh, it's still not super well-known over here, I'm gender fluid. But <laughs> most, mostly M. <laughs> Some M, uh, mostly M. Hey, you, pronouns M and M. Well, I like the I can as M as a big endorser of M and M's. I'm all for those <laughs> pronouns. Yeah. I love those things. Um, but yeah, so I guess basically, Blake's seven. I think uh, it's always good to kind of lay it out first because. Mm. You and I know it, of course, and our buddy Lord Thoth is a fan. I don't know how many other people are who are here that are fans of the show, but anyone who hears it later or was here now, it's always good to kind of uh, lay out what the show is about a little bit because, like I said, 
it's not available. It's not even available over here in the states, as far as crazy. Uh, I mean, it's on the UK Brit box, but yeah, but not here. here. It's not on the US Brit box, but now, I think you should all campaign. Oh, I want it. it. Well, you know, look. The only way it was distributed over here, of course, in the eighties, it was distributed on the, on some of our um, public broadcasting yeah. affiliate channels, and then the the uh, the uh, VHS tapes. I bought them all. I bought every one. They did it one per episode, and I have them all. Still have them all. And all 52 episodes they did. So oh, at that point, it was distributed over here, just like Doctor Who was. But after that, when they came out with um that nice uh, 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 DVD set a while back, mm. not not here. I bought I bought a Region 2 player just so I could buy those. And the copies, I had to buy them all over, like eBay and things like that. And some of my copies were messed up. I finally had a friend just download them and... You know, burn me some copies that were real that I watch now that are a lot nicer than those. But it sucks that it's not that it's not available everywhere. It really is. It's it's awful. It is. It's 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 a it's a form of cultural vandalism. You know, it, 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 by denying access and distribution of uh, or such classic series like that. You know, and it's it, it really should be as big as Doctor Who easily. Well, absolutely, absolutely. Or as big um, as it was, rather than as, as it is now. <laughs> well, absolutely. Hey, Captain Trek, good to see you, my friend. And uh, Eastland Burkholder basically says, uh, "Yeah, it has been on YouTube it was, for a while. It was on there, quote unquote, unmolested for a long time, and now they keep taking it down." Well, they took it down because they they put it on the UK Brit Box. That's yeah. the reason. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, I mean, it was just gathering dust in the corner of the internet, you know? <laughs> yeah, it, it's, just, it's just a shame. Um, I remember, and here's the thing about that. Look, I remember a couple of years back, oh, well, a good while back now, when they were releasing those new, um, um, those DVDs in the UK and seeing reviews. And this review pissed me off so bad. Mm -hmm. it really aggravates me. This a reviewer went in with the, High praise of how of the writing, mm. the acting, the stories, but couldn't recommend it because of the sets and the visuals. It's like go fuck yourself, man. It, it, look, if you don't like it, it's one thing, but you're admitting it's good. But you can't. You, you think that that's it, so superficial. He's, embar he's embarrassed, right? He's embarrassed because he thinks if he, if he I'm embarrassed if, for him. If, well, absolutely, because I guess he's embarrassed because he thinks if someone watch, ah oh, man, look at that effect. I can't. I know idiots. Yes, idiots who won't watch old Doctor Who or Blake Seven because they can't look at the effects, or even old Star Trek in some cases because they can't look at these effects and things like that. I say, you know, well, it's, it's not made it's for them. It, it's their loss. So sort of, and they're not always that young either. Some of them are like people just yeah, they've got to have the visual crap. And well, of course there is there is um there is a chap on. Um, it, it, well, again, it used to be on YouTube, but got taken down by the BBC. But there is, I, uh, he's now got a, a channel on Vimeo. Yes. Uh, and he's done, this guy's done some great um, CGI um, special effects, which was inspired by the Star Trek uh, re release, you know, the TOS with. Um, with mm -hmm. new, you know, with the new updated new effects. effects. So, I mean, some guy's actually right. doing that. Um, as a, as his hobby, I guess, um, to you know, to update a few episodes of Blake Seven, um, and to update uh, the Liberator flying, you know, flying around planets and, and stuff, and adding robots and, and such. Uh, and it looks great, you know. So it's a, a really nice homage. It's fan produced, and it's pretty good, you know. It's uh, it should be celebrated, and it's yeah, because it is an what? option. I personally, and there's the thing, you know, I I, ne I, I never minded, in fact, kind of liked the Star Trek remastered for, and there's a couple of reasons yeah, I love why. It. I hated the George Lucas, what he did, what he did with his special editions was different because he piddled around with the story and he screwed it over. I hate his special editions. These did not interfere with the stories of Star Trek at all. And updating the effects, now again, I, did I need it? No, I love Trek anyway. It was fine the way it was. But it was kind of it's kind of fun to look at because I've watched all those other ones a million times that way. It's, it's kind of fun. upscaled as well, so you've got that extra. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Howard it's Blake fun. is Howard Blake is the name of the the guy, and that's his channel on Vimeo. Um, I I don't know. I can put the link in the private chat if you want to put it up in the sure main sure. chat. Um, so you can, it's uh, episode uh, is seek and destroy. Oh, seek, locate, uh, destroy. That's yeah. The first yeah. Uh, first uh, Travis. Nice. Yep. 
I, and, I, think you, I think you sent me that at one point. You yeah, may have, you may have. So you, um, you want to copy of that and put that in in the main chat so if people want to check it out. Okay, dope. Let's see here. So I believe he's working on another one. I don't know which one he's working on at the moment, but uh, Dan from the the Space Book interviewed him for his channel. So I'd, I'd say to check that out as well if you haven't already. Okay, well, absolutely. I'm. I'm uh, let's see here. I'm finding it now. I'll just put this link. Let me grab it here. And uh, anybody wants to check that out, please do. If you're a Blake Seven fan, it's uh, really cool. Uh, let's see here. Put it yeah, and uh, Numa 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 says uh, we had a similar view from our own TARDIS zone null who hated the intro credits and graphics. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I wasn't very keen on, on the opening titles of Blake Seven. I, I love them. I, it's, I love them. It's so of its time, you know. Uh, and it showed the sort of level of creativity on a shoestring budget. Um, and I, I, I admire that, you know. Yes, we love you anyway, No, We forget. Yeah. We forget. <laughs> uh, and of course, yes. uh, it's, uh, some idiot came onto, the, onto one of his streams and, you know, he, he was told by Noel on the stream that he had just started watching, you know, the, I mean, we've got to season two of, Blake Seven, and um, you know, and then this guy just blurted out, "Oh yeah, everyone dies at the end." <laughs> oh, <laughs> was that that? Hell. Oh, that jag off. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah, um, and it, it, I, I was absolutely my, I just my nails clawed into my the palms of my hand. I was just so angry. Yeah, I don't, I and it, it ruined it for him. You know, he, he, I mean, we've been struggling to try and get Noel back on board to to do the watch alongs again because he. Now that sort of hanging like a massive cloud over the over yeah. the um, the whole thing, and it, it's sported for him. And I, I'll probably sport it for someone who might be watching this now. <laughs> so, well, no, that's not, well, yeah, but the thing about it here probably knows that. But uh, yeah, you know, yeah. the thing is, look, I, I I felt really bad for Noel on that one, even though I knew it before I ever got to see all of them, because mm. someone I, someone blurted out on me, and actually that's why I went and watched after watching the very first episode the way back and not watching after you know watching it later or not watching it from that point way back in the 80s when it first aired here then a friend told me to watch that last episode and that made me want to go back and watch him so from in my particular case it didn't ruin it maybe even more intrigued however we know a lot of people like to be surprised and um I, I hope it doesn't completely kill it for Noel, but it's really... Well, I mean, you know, when I first watched Blake 7, it was obviously when it was broadcast first time on the BBC, you know, growing up as a, a very small kid, you know, I was, what, uh, in 1980, I was five. So, you know, it, it was something I remembered seeing as a kid and loving it as a kid. And uh, uh -oh. I hadn't seen it, you know, I mean, yeah... Doctor Who was still on the air when I was growing up, so that was the main thing. And then obviously Blake Seven ended, but I didn't see, didn't, I didn't actually see the last episode of Blake Seven. So I grew up sort of moving on and sort of kind of forgetting it, really. You know, I had the mm -hmm. Toy Liberator, the little dinky or whatever it was, Matchbox. Um, but that was it. And, you know, home video sort of took off, but I don't remember the sort of Blake Seven videos very early on and i think they came quite late yeah um, but it was never rebroadcast on tv again terrestrial tv at all so i, I believe it was on sky at the time or bs sky or bsb or whatever it was back then um b sky b um but very few people had satellite tv um in the 90s so yeah. it just totally sort of dissipated in my memory um Mm -hmm. But you know, thanks to the joys of the internet and stuff, it, it, you know, I I managed to rediscover it through seeing it was on YouTube and deciding to watch it because it was all the episodes. I was like, wow, this is this is great. Yeah. Um, and this is a few years ago, not that long, but um, I rewatched it all from from start to finish, and you know, um, but because I hadn't seen the end as a kid when it was originally on, um, someone spoiled it for me as well and someone did the same to gary after i spent at least a year trying to convince him to watch um to watch blake seven you know 
go from the erotic, you know, I kept mm -hmm. bugging him to watch it. And eventually he did. And uh, someone spoiled it for him as well. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I mean, it is an old show, so. I know, but it, it, it seems to be yeah. the first thing that someone says, you know. It, it's just like. Uh, it does seem to be. The, yeah, you're right about that. It's tough to hide it because it's everywhere. Yeah. Um, well, buddy, it, seems yeah be, I, the, it, it seems to be because people want to kind of show that they know the show, right? They want to prove that right. they know the show by saying the one thing that, you know, every Blake 7 fan or someone who watches it knows. You know, and sometimes it will be someone who doesn't really know the show but knows about it, and they'll always know. Oh, that, oh yeah, that's the show where everyone carks it. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yeah. Well, by the way, in him, I, I'm, so, yeah. I'm sorry if we spoil it, spoiled it for you. I, you know, we didn't both of we just kind of blurted it out because it is kind of a yeah. I've, I've just goal. done exactly what I could do it again. Else to do. Yeah, yeah. But, no, I yeah. we didn't. We didn't. We, I think if you're tuning yeah. in, it's probably because you know the show anyway. You know. <laughs> yes. Uh, yeah. Absolutely. But I'm sorry about that. If we did spoil it for anyone else, um, uh, unlike us, it was not malicious. That guy was an idiot for doing that to Noel like that. Well, I don't think he did it malicious. I just think it was just really insensitive. Okay. To, I mean, I don't know if he actually listened to what Noel said, but you know, like he's just started to watch it. You know, but uh, but I mean, it just seems to me absolutely. You know, incalculable that someone could actually just say that. You know, knowing what they've just been told that they've only just started to watch it and that they're really enjoying it, and then you just say something like that. And he's just like, oh, you so yeah, yeah. I'm um, so angry. <laughs> project storyline. Thank you. Story time. Excuse me. Uh, good to see you, my friend. Thank you for popping in. Appreciate it. And yes, it's uh, you've just. That's a forty-year-old spoiler you just put out there. Uh, you know, Vader was Luke's father, and again, that's into the. Yeah, and the thing about that one is, it's a, and which I, you know, it is in the pop culture. I mean, that's so entrenched into the pop culture. Whereas Blake Seven is, unfortunately, since it is so great, it should not be obscure, but it is. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, when you mention Blake Seven, almost no one's ever heard about it. Uh, when you mention Star Wars, everyone's heard about it. Everyone knows who Darth Vader is. So, a little bit, yeah, but still. I guess, like, again, there was a video. I don't know if you've ever seen this video. There was a, a parent had had his very young children. No, oh, this is maybe 10 years ago, whatever. Um, he, he had started them out right, putting them on the original trilogy of Star Wars. And he had them watching it, and he didn't tell them what was going to happen. So he re he actually filmed or you know, recorded their uh, reaction to, I am your father. And the looks on their faces, was, it, was so, it was precious. It was so cute. It was like, oh, my God. They were... They, I mean, they were just stunned, and like, well, they yeah. they were lucky, but not everyone of this generation is going to get be that lucky. They all know who his father is. They probably that's the joy of introducing people to these kind of shows and films and things. It's it's because you remember what it was like when you first did it, and that's why I think watch um, reactions on YouTube are so popular it's because we can relive that feeling by seeing it through someone else. There's this great. Um, there's this girl on, on YouTube, I subscribe to her, and she's watching Classic Doctor Who for the first time. So she's going through all of the oh, doctors from cool. from uh, William Hartnell to, you know, all the way through to Sylvester, or, or I suppose uh, the film as well with, um, with Paul McGann. But mm -hmm. currently she's recently started the Tom Baker era, so you know, that's when I really started to pay attention because that's my my man. That's my main man. We love Tom, Tom, Baker, Tom Baker rules. Yeah, for me, he's the, the, you know, the doctor, the doctor, you know, the definitive doctor. Um, and her, her, her name's Mary Claire, and um, she's a very sweet girl, and um, she's absolutely loving. You know, I mean, she, I think her favourite, well, her favourite, I mean, she cries at the, you know, when all of the doctors go their, go their way. Um she seemed to be quite a big fan of Troutman and, and Pertwee. Nice. So I'm um, hoping, you know, I mean, I think she's, yeah, at the moment she's on Robots of Death. So she's oh my, on season 14. Yeah. So, um, so watching that is a pure joy for me because it's like seeing someone relive, you know, well, live that for the first time. The first know? time. Oh God. Yeah, yeah man. It's, it's great. You know, it's great that someone, you know, I mean, she's, what, I guess she's like 20. 21 or something like that so it's it, you know a young person who appreciates it. and she loved the black and white era as well so she didn't have a problem with that and she um 
she doesn't have that hang up you know and I, I i really appreciate that because i think that that shows that shows you know a true love or well, i think she's a fan of the new era though i have to say but you know i can forgive because she's such a nice person <laughs> you know she's come across really nice sure well you know yeah. when i was um I just don't get to talk like seven that many that much with people who love it like we do because when I but when I had my my comic shop back in 1988 and in the late 80s, I had this friend of mine. Um, I would bring episodes, and we would watch it over and over. And I already I'd already watched them like all the way through, even at that point, multiple mm -hmm. times as I've watched every episode. And I even made this like compilation on my with my two VCRs, I, like all mm -hmm. of my favorite Avon's greatest hits scenes. Mm. All of Avon's greatest scenes. They called Avon the man, the myth, the bastard. And, uh, I we would uh, we spend hours. He was a history teacher. He was a, he would come by comics. We spend hours talking about Blake Seven. I'd never had anybody that was. I mean, all my I have a lot of friends who love it. Don't get me wrong. That mm. were that into it and all and the minutia of it. And what we talked about the most. You know, we did. Yeah, you know, sure. You can you can laugh at the effects in the set. I mean, actually, I love the Liberator set. I love the flight deck. I think it's beautiful. Oh yeah. But you can, and I love the ship, the Liberator. I always the love the lounge feel about it. You know, like, I love it. I great. love it. And I don't know why a bunch of robots in the system. I'm not spoiling anything too much here, but uh, would need I've that. But, but whatever. Already. Yeah, exactly. Well, yeah, but that's that was a little more vague. So, um, you no, know, I was I wasn't even thinking. You know, I was, oh god, I said it myself. Now I feel like such yeah, a no. Uh, it happens, man. But I hear again, it is old. We're talking um forty years. Yeah. Ago. Shame on you for not having watched it already. Yes, <laughs> you <you're laughs> bastard. So it was. We, we we and we what we talked about a lot was the Shakespearean aspects of it and how great mm. these characters really are. Um, and yes, this show. I love Star Trek. Star Trek is probably my first love of everything. Original Trek, but but I love you know Star Trek, legit Trek from nineteen sixty six to two thousand five. That's only Star Trek, yeah, because it's dead after that. There's no, they've never made anything Star Trek after that, in my opinion. And uh, but well, uh, I, I have to say, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't, I, I mean, I did used to watch it, um, you know, Next Generation, uh, but for me, it was always the original series, which was the best. And you know, that's I, my favorite, I love that. my favorite, but I've, I've warmed up to all the other ones and actually do. I'm, I'm one of those weirdos that loves Enterprise and will fight to the death on that one. In fact, did a whole show like um, I, re I remember my. Uh, years ago, on. my 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 housemate would leave that theme tune playing on full blast, and he'd leave it on a loop and go out. <laughs> it was just like that that bloody theme tune from Enterprise. Uh, I was just I like, used I, to it. I will kill, I will kill you. <laughs> I, love it. I, I don't mind it now at all. Although it's still awkward, they should have just used the uh, the theme that that was actually made for originally to be that. Someone even went on YouTube and, and put on YouTube change put the actual theme that it was originally intended to be, which is called mm. Archer's theme with those really wonderful opening credits. Cause visually they're really beautiful mm. and it is so much better. I didn't like the ship though. I didn't like the enterprise. I like the, NX I like the NXO. I, 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 I'm, I, I got used like to it. it. I love it. And I love Archer. I didn't like the, um, the, the enterprise F either. I thought that was just ridiculous. Enterprise F. I remember E. There wasn't was F, F. The, the, the one from the far future. Um, there was an I from the far Enterprise I. Oh, it's an I. God. Or J. No, there was J. J. D Daniel J. showed them J. Yes, uh, J. I don't remember seeing yeah. an F, but E was the last one in the in the most in the uh, next gen movies. Yeah, no, this but, was the one that was uh, I think in in the Enterprise season. Uh, well, no, yeah, you're right. They showed J for a minute. Like J, briefly. that's it. J, sorry. In the far future. Get my but yes, it's weird looking, and it was it's yeah. huge. It's a weird looking shit, but it's from the far flung future. Yeah. But I love it, and we'll defend that show to the death. I don't even mind that the theme anymore. Like my buddy Captain Trek hated it. I, 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 just, I, I got over it, and I, I can take it now. I mean, you know, I don't mind it. I, I, I'm with you know, Captain Trek on that. It's got those credits nicely. However, I multiple things can be true at the same time. It should have just been a normal orchestral. Or the one they, the one that they made called Archer's theme, which they used. In the end credits, that was originally supposed to be it. It should stay that way. I love I love the theme tune from the the Battlestar Galactica reboot. I thought that was really you know the kind of ethnic thing, and I love the theme tune from uh, uh, the uh, Expanse as well. I think that they're beautiful pieces of music. I don't. I'm not familiar with those too much. I've watched the first couple seasons of Expanse, but I haven't seen. I, I can't really remember the. the that was tune. lovely. They're great opening titles as well. Really great. They still have opening titles to TV shows. It's good. 
Yeah. Cause uh, now they do. The it opening titles to, um, um, Raised by Wolves was good, but the theme tune to that was fucking awful. So I don't but, know if you've seen that. No, it's I a haven't. really, really strange show. Uh, but it's a, like proper science fiction. It's kind of, it's got that kind of um, sort of Asimov feel to it. You know, that kind of sciencey, fictiony kind of feel to it, which I like. Well, for a, a while there. Well, for a while there, they weren't even doing opening titles to to, to newer TV shows. They were just kind of just starting like a brief little thing and then they would wouldn't have it you know it kind of became yeah, out yeah. of favor and then um the marvel netflix shows which daredevil was great the other ones weren't so good but the opening titles are all really good on those it's, i don't know it's kind of a thing with me i like i like there to be opening titles to oh about. yeah absolutely that's part of the part of the charm of Can the show imagine, i mean that's what that freaked me out when they did that more than anything i think when they did that first episode with jody whittaker and doctor who you know squatting in my favorite show um <laughs> and they had it was a cold opening there were there were no opening titles whatsoever it was so strange and it didn't feel i mean it already didn't feel like doctor because everything had changed you know the only thing that was a constant was the external the tardis and even then it wasn't in uh in that first episode so there was nothing doctor who about it at all you know even yeah. the sonic screwdriver she made didn't look like a sonic you know it was just uh, it was just uh, <laughs> Yeah, and, and and no opening titles. I mean, that was a bold no. and stupid move, really, because I mean there was nothing to make you feel like Doctor Who whatsoever at all. Like no familiar like, yep. villains, no familiar no. faces, yeah. no no proper Doctor, no proper Sonic, no Tardis whatsoever. It was and no theme, no no titles. It was just awful. And Absolutely, I, 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 I can never it. understand it. Never. Anyway, we're not here to talk about it. No, but, I, but I hear you. You're absolutely, absolutely right there. Blake we had I a question. I didn't know there was a J figure. Um, uh, Lord Toth, he says it all looks blurry and looks weird, but I have the figure. I didn't know they did a a a, a, um, a J uh, figure. The figures, they do them all. They do all of them now. So, cool. And I, yeah, I agree, Captain Trek, we will, bro. It's been a while. Um, but let's see. It's still so dying. You say Mikey Spock's does her acting. That's acting? Oh, <laughs> I gotta tell you, man. Acting, time, acting up, was, maybe. Um, I, yeah. I have, I had to give that up, that filthy show up for my health concerns. It, 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 yeah, it, I, I, it I, I, I watched watchable. the first two. I watched the first two. Um, mostly, it was on in the background by season two. The first season, I, I, I watched because the CGI was pretty good. <laughs> that was the only thing. Uh, I mean, it was just dreadful. Dreadful. I, I, I sat there <laughs> shouting at the TV half the time, I think. Um, but by season two, it was literally, you know, I was looking it's at my phone. So bad. <laughs> I mean, it's so season, bad. Season three, I got as far as episode three, whenever they introduced that non-binary dull thing in. Uh, and I, I, I just, I'm not, I'm not doing this anymore. Thank, thank God for those who were throwing themselves on that grenade for us that sit there and tell us everything that happened so you can at least know. Yeah. And I don't want to hear any shit from people who say, well, you didn't match it. Yeah, but I heard someone said, someone yeah, told I heard, me. I heard details. from someone I trusted, you know, to tell right. me what's The what. details, too. They didn't just say, you know, this really sucked. No, I mean, they get, I mean, these guys, but there's no telling you why it sucked. That's the thing. Right. And it's like, and because we've watched it already enough. To know it's not for us that yeah yeah okay, what okay. they what they're telling us we can relate to our own experience of it so we know that they're not bullshitting us because that's exactly how we felt about it anyway so you know it's not going to tell us something we disagree with no. it's, it's pretty I mean, much as we feel horrible. that's what you the know, fandom menace is you know. well yeah you got guys like doomcock and gary and as and people and a whole bunch of people that sit there and giving you all the details on it yeah, and you can so triangulate you, i'll take it <laughs> I, I, I can't the, do it. It's the triangulation of suck. I sat through Picard. That's how stupid I am. And yeah, I, I didn't. That's why I, I, I can't do SPD. Watch it. I, I you, will never watch it. Never I, watch it. That is such a piece of filth mm. that I embarrassed that I watched it and I was reviewing yeah. it for a while and I said, you know, I'm not even, I can't because to review something properly, you do have to watch it more than once. You have to sit there and well, I think you once know, you start it, something, you kind of have to commit. But yeah. even I, I couldn't do it for season three of the uh, STD. I just no, no chance. No chance. <laughs> That's not Star Trek. It never will be. I, no. Of course, I, I hate the mo those George Abrams filthy movies too. Um, uh, if I have a triggering mechanism, if I can be triggered, I don't mind that. those films because I, I, can, I, I can separate it from. They are filth. From, I can separate it from 
this universe. And I hate the, you know, different timeline. I hate that concept. I think it's lazy writing. But they are not Star Trek. They are, they're not Star Trek, but as a standalone sort of film thing, I, I, it was okay. I, I, I quite liked the first one, and I, I quite like the one that everyone hated the last one. <laughs> Let me tell you something. I, I can, I'm admitting to you and to everyone my irrational, almost irrational, psychotic hatred of that first piece of <laughs> filthy shit in 2009. That's why we're here, by the way. I wouldn't have a show without it. I wanted to go on to trash that filth. I hate it so much that that's why I kind of into dumbness, which is a really bad movie. Mm -hmm. it, tick it tickles me because it pissed <laughs> off all the same people that, that put up with the first one. Mm. The first one trashed Trek and destroyed things. It destroyed, it turned Kirk into a dumb frat boy. Uh, uh, Spock and Uhura, are you kidding me? Destroyed Vulcan, all this horrible right. shit. Yeah. The, the, I, the I totally, totally agree with that. I mean, for me, the degradation of Leonard Nimoy. The what? first, the, the first one that really. It's a piece of film. Not to me was the Into Darkness. I thought that was just absolutely yeah, disgusting and dire. You know why I like it? Go on. Because for four years I had to hear from people when I finally convinced them, yeah, I admit that the 09 one was not Star Trek, but it was okay. But if they put Khan in there, man, I would be pissed. I'm like, wait, 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 wait. They ru let me get this straight. They ruined the, all of the other characters and ruined Star <laughs> Trek with that piece of shit 09 Jar Jar Abrams built. But somehow Khan is sacrosanct to you? Screw and, and played by the One worst guy. casting. Like, I mean, like, I, I like Benedict Cumberbatch. I think he's a, I like an him. interesting character. He's got a weird face, fair enough. But uh, as Khan, no. Right. <laughs> but dude, at that point, I'm laughing my ass off. I didn't. I didn't. I, I'm, when I saw him, I tell everyone he's going to be Khan. No, he's not. And when he says it, I mean, I'm sorry. As bad as it is, I'm on the floor. I'm about dying of laughter. It's so funny. <laughs> my like, name is. Called. But let's get on topic with our M's right. We uh, got off topic. And by the way, again, you could, my blood pressure goes through the roof when talking about those filthy movies, almost as bad as talking about Picard or STD. My hatred will ever burn for them. Uh, <laughs> I'm a nut about it. I can't help it. On topic, a great intro, uh, intro to multiple characters. Jenna asks Blake, uh, what's the time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah, in the very yeah. first, in, uh, in the way back. Which was the first episode of Blake Seven, everyone? Mm -hmm. um, we meet Jenna Stannis, smuggler, super super cute, hot lady, um, who meets Blake, and she was kind of mean to him at first. Yeah, she was a really, I mean, kind of a bitch her, to him. Her character was quite, yeah, I mean, she was quite attitude. She was like some sort of bad. It kind of sort of almost imagine a chewing gum, you know, sort of standing there like. You know, like a Turkish hooker or something. <laughs> yeah. And Villa I mean, you, got, you definitely got space pirate vibes, but she she turned out to be like this ever so prim middle class lady. You know, sort of. You know, by this by the next episode. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Was I think I, I would like to have seen a bit more attitude from her. Actually, I think she well, she sort of mellowed out far too quick. I think she was taking a liking to Blake. It was that simple. And, um, yeah, maybe. And of course, she she does call out Villa for stealing his watch. As uh, in, uh, I'm never gonna be able to pronounce that too, mm -hmm. but I love it. In -ma -ma -ma? Let's see. In -ma 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 -ma? Mm -hmm. uh, no, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Phenomenal, but, but yeah, <laughs> but I love it. But God, I love Jenna. I mean, I, again, it's true. That she. Didn't I, I, like, I like the way that do. they didn't introduce them all at once as well. You know, you got. You got the introduction of Jenna and Villa in episode uh, episode one, and then you had um, you had Avon in episode is it two or three. Avon was uh, he started in the space fall. Yeah, it was episode two. Mm -hmm. That's two. And then um, you had Gan in episode three. So it was it was quite quite a sort of evolving thing, which I liked. You know, it wasn't all boom, there you go, get on with it. You know, it was, it yeah, was it nicely done. I think. Well, oh, they took their time setting up the episodes. I mean, when you watch Blake mm -hmm. Seven, I mean, it takes you. I mean, they it takes about four episodes, four episodes before it starts to really of, kick off. You know. Well, yeah, they they lay groundwork. It's uh, mm -hmm. the, again, I like that that they're not afraid to. Yes, on the prison ship London retro dicky. Um. Mm -hmm. Good. By the way, Retro Drinky, thank you for being Hello. here. Uh, appreciate it. Good to see you, sir. 
Um, but yes, on this when they were on the London, you know, again, here's the thing about that, by the way. I guess I've watched it a million times. I don't know about you. I've always wondered about the time dilation here with on the London because let's see here. I think I don't know. They never are clear about how much time passes. Uh, Avon, I mean, excuse me, Blake tells Avon, he said, a private deal with the crew, whatever, you had four months to think about. It didn't take you that long to realize they'd have to kill you to keep you quiet. Yeah. So are we to, again, I don't know, is it at this point, because they don't really move time that well, or at least give you that much of an explanation. So at this point, when he's, when they're threatened, when they're about to take over the ship, have they been on the ship for four months? That's a good question. Well, I mean, I've never. And again, they say it's like an eight-month trip to um, to Cygnus Alpha. Well, it, it, well, it must it must have been because I mean they get there, don't they? I mean, then when they so that's what I'm saying. So when they get on the Liberator, and um, the rest of the uh, prisoners are brought to Cygnus Alpha, did four more months pass? That's they even said it, but because in Cygnus Alpha, um, uh, you know, Commander Leyland. Mm. And uh, Mr. You know, uh, actually, Raker has been killed. So you got uh, mm. uh, his um, his first officer, his new first officer, says something about we've been in space for, space for eight months, sir. Yeah. So like, it just doesn't seem like that much time passed. I, mean, I guess it did. You know, if you remember in Horizon, Blake even talks about a, a character that he met on that ship. Ah, ah, but didn't the Liberator sort of go off really, really fast when they first got in, uh, uh, in control of, of, of it? So probably went off in like completely different direction. Maybe it had to sort of resume course. Yeah, but eight months though, I mean... They, again, they come. Well, maybe they, they knew that they didn't. Ha well, because they knew that the London wouldn't get there for another few months, so they they had to right. time it. Maybe, but they didn't really act like they'd been spending that. They acted like it was just a few minutes later. Is what I'm saying. Yeah, it's, yeah, they're, they're, it's they're, fine. It's a it's not yeah. a nitpick. It's just like a hmm. <laughs> well, yeah, I, I you know I th I think nothing's perfect. It, you know, for a show like that, and you know, and, and BBC writers kind of. Probably, a lot of these things get written very quickly, don't they? I mean, they're, they're very well written, but they, you know, often don't have time to consider everything. Um, that's possible. Absolutely. Oh, again, it's just the kind of crap that, because I've watched every episode about fifty zillion times, I think about stupid crap like that. Sometimes. No, 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 that's that's really interesting. Yeah, I hadn't thought of that. Uh, yeah, uh, maybe I need to watch it a few more times again. <laughs> it just it struck me like, hmm. But it, whatever, I love the show so much. And again, and you know, how do you not love? Um, Cygnus Alpha with it. I mean, it's not the greatest of episodes, but you get Brian uh, Blessed. Brian Blessed, yeah. Blessed. And yeah I, I did a, um, I think I said this before, I did a commercial with him. Oh, wow, really? <laughs> yeah, it was, um, it was, I think it was a, uh, a World Cup betting thing or something. Um, and so we got to spend the entire afternoon with him in this massive um, school hall, which happened to be the same school that Patrick Troughton went to, funnily enough. So there's pictures of him everywhere. And um, yeah, Brian Blessed was there and we all had to sort of cheer him and he was supposed to be giving us a, a education on, on football or something. I can't remember what it was exactly. But he, he in between takes, um, he was regaling us nonstop the whole afternoon with all these hilarious anecdotes. And it was absolutely nice. fascinating. And he was so funny. Gordon's alive! <laughs> but he was oh, telling us, and we, at the end, we all got to I do a, a group photo with him. And I was right next to him. And I never got a copy of that bloody photo. I was absolutely oh, gutted. Oh, man. Damn. <laughs> yeah. Lord Sad. Thought says, I think the, they were there for... Um, Several weeks because they get to know each other. And in a later episode, Blake name drops Roe in the upper horizon. The only thing about that is they're wearing the same clothes. They were just now, by the time they were. Oh, but they might have just by they, complete coincidence just put on well, the no, same clothes that they wore when they got to yeah, but all, yeah, but also by the time when they were in, when they were on Cygnus Alpha, after they, uh, they were just now fighting about the teleport. And they put Blake down there. And they're just now discovering all those rooms with all that stuff in it. It doesn't track. But it's fine. Maybe the door was locked and it took. Um, they they Villa wrote it like to, to fix it. <laughs> Villa wasn't there. Remember, he wasn't there yet. He wasn't oh yeah, like Alpha. So yeah, so I'm thinking. I think that they just made a mis some mistakes. That's why it took it. so long. 
<laughs> they had, had someone to pick the lock or something. Avon can open doors pretty well too. Remember the time he opened one when uh, Villa? Yeah. He said, "Wrong again." <laughs> but uh, anyway, yeah. But I, again, it's just a mistake in time compression. It's not an evil thing. It's I love the episodes. Timey wimey, wibbly wobbly. Maybe. Wibbly, it's, that's it's, the answer. It's, that 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 right. would be if if. Um, Stephen Moffat was writing it. That, that would be the explanation. <laughs> it's a fanboy nitpick. What can I tell you? <laughs> oh, we had a question from Nim -nim 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 early on, quite early on, actually. He asked which was our favourite. Um, uh, which was our favourite? Uh, uh, oh gosh. Um, oh, really? Was uh, Travis. Which character was Travis? Which oh, uh, Travis, Travis? Was best of, and why? And why? I didn't see that one. Okay. Um. Well, I think we both talked about this before that we like mm -hmm. the first traps better, Stephen Greif. Um, I just grief. Uh, is it grief? Okay, I, I don't know. I, I, I would say grief. Maybe it's grief because it is I before he. Okay, think. either works for me. I really think he was just really um before I for the few episodes he got to be in. Mm -hmm. He was really charismatic. Uh, he was really scary. I think he brought. He was an up. imposing character. Yeah, and he had very the, imposing. He had that kind of Shakespearean voice. He, he, he was. Yes. That kind of Marlowe in kind of character, you know. And, uh, I think the trouble with Croucher was that he he was quite an East <laughs> London boy, you know. He was a bit of yeah. a Barrow boy, a bit of a wise geezer, um, and uh, he, he just didn't. I mean, it was so jarringly different. It's like you can almost imagine, okay, with the different face. You could say, well, he had to form a disguise because he was in trouble um so he had to have like plastic surgery to change his appearance or so you could argue that but the voice was so different <laughs> um but I, I i just found that really jarring um i think he got better towards the end he was really good in trial mm. i thought that was his best performance um but yeah he, you got i got used to him. nothing against brian croucher i mean it was at all um, no, I think I think in trial he definitely sort of that was his moment to shine. I think he did a really good job on that one. But I, I think overall, um, it took a long time to kind of warm to him. I know Noel didn't take to him very much at all. Uh, I think I think he yeah. had a difficult job. I I I, I kind of am okay with. Him. Oh, it sounds awful, but. Um, I think the casting was wasn't that great, to be honest. I mean, bless yeah. him, he's, he's a lovely guy. He, he, he comes across really well in interviews and things. But um, for me, Stephen Grief was... Yeah, I, I prefer him. I, I don't really mind Brian that much, but I prefer Stephen there for that for that character. Uh, but I, I thought Brian was was competent. Again, we, we just kind of jokingly called him Elvis. Yeah. Like <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can imagine him curling in the living room. Like, oh. <laughs> but still, again, he um he was there, and you know, uh, was it? Oh, there's one. Let's see, Richard. Being a real nerd, I loved it when they found Orac, the living computer mind. I loved Orac. Again, yeah. there's a testament to the writing on this show and how great it is. You can write a big little, I mean, excuse me, a little box of clear plastic and some silly wires, and make him a great character. He's so snooty. I love it. And he's based he's on so the... condescending. He's like, oh god, do I have to talk? It kind of reminded me. I, I, I wonder actually if Douglas Adams kind of watched that. And, uh, which came first, Orac or Hitchhikers? Um, Hitchhikers got came a little bit before that, I believe. Uh, uh, well, it was like seventy nine. So no, I think it was maybe a little bit before um, Hitchhikers. Right? I'm not sure. Hitchhikers. Mm -hmm. had, it was a radio show first, right? And then, it yeah. was, then they did the TV show. I love the BBC yeah. TV show. And then Hate it the, became a book. Yeah. And then the book, yeah. And, of course, over here in the States, we weren't getting the radio show. We got uh, albums mm. that were uh, redone, re-recorded with, obviously, very abridged. Yeah, I, I collected the, the recent releases. Well, I, I got, like, three of them, but they were, like, 50 quid each. Um, and I, 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 yeah. I just I haven't managed to keep up with, with purchasing them. So I got the first three albums. Uh, I'm so gutted that I didn't get the rest. Um. um but they're beautifully packaged. <laughs> they're so beautiful. So I'm loath to, to sell them. But, um, oh, nice. I love it. Um, <laughs> but yeah, it kind of reminded me of sort of uh, Marvin, you know, that kind of 
sort of superiority yeah. kind of, I mean, you know, Marley's yeah. paranoid and, and depressed, par you know, paranoid uh, android. <laughs> but yeah, he's 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 got he's got that you know brain the size of a computer, okay. and here I am opening doors. <laughs> you know, here I am brain the size of a planet, and they have me that. The parking. But you got Orak is kind of you know he's he's kind of, do I have to you know do I have to do this you know who are these people you know I um, love it. But uh, yeah, he's he's adorable because he you know and it, I I love the sort of interplay between Orak and Avon. Um. Yep. Because you know, Avon is no fool by any standard. You know, well, he has been fooled a number of times, but uh, <clears throat> he's uh, he doesn't take. You know, he doesn't like being bested at the best of times. And Orac is is this kind of computer that he's trying to sort of battle the wills. You know, when he when he was talking about trying to reduce uh, reduce Orac down to a, a smaller size. He was like making it as if it was a question, posing it as if it was a question to kind of work Orak into actually doing it for him to do his bidding, you know. And he, I think it would have been quicker to have done it that way than to have asked Orak to do it. You know? so, <laughs> Playing on his um, ego. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I, I love that. I thought that was great. Um, well, like, he is basically Ensor. Of course, obviously, Ensor did his voice in the episode Orak, but then later. Hmm. Peter Tuddenham did the voice, but like Avon said, I remember when they were saying, oh, I hated I the, the way he died. I hated that. <laughs> In store? Oh, I have the yeah. same. Yeah. Oops. But uh, the, uh, I like, I just, um, I love the fact that Insor's uh, ego even said, he's not a computer, he's a brain, he's a genius or whatever. And then later they're saying, uh, but in, but Orac isn't a computer, and, in, and Avon said, "Ah, that is its creator's fantasy speaking. Orac yeah. is a computer. It is a highly capacity, highly charged, you know, blah whatever, and that is all. He's a computer. That's what he is." And Avon is just like, "Yeah, yeah." I they had that. an interesting relationship. Yeah, it, it was kind of like an old married couple. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. yes and then of course and they and you know gorak was a little bastard he mm. he got him out of some scrapes <clears throat> uh, really big scrapes actually but he also endangered them a couple of times yeah but i mean he's got his own thing going on he's and got shadow his own sort of plan. you know that's it yeah he's got his own agenda and it's a little bit again mm. it's this little bitty silly looking i mean that's so i love the way it looks i'm gonna be wrong but i'm just saying it's this little this little small square or not square rectangular More box or have you. <laughs> yeah and um yeah i love it though Conversive. i love the. so it just shows level of writing on this show you can make a uh, you know a, this little computer a great character that's great writing um you know writing's the key you can set up this show was so good at making even smaller characters um, appealing. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, and Chris can't, them out. can't write a single background character. No. A mutoid would have more character than anyone from, you know, the main cast of Doctor Who nowadays in, in one episode. <laughs> just... In Duel. In Duel, that, that mutoid that was um, partnered up with Travis to fight Blake She was Dad. gorgeous as well. Oh, you know, she, yeah, but yeah, she's also... Yeah. There was a little backstory to her, and uh, you know, Travis had her mm. there because Travis had known her in her previous life, and uh, yeah. there was some character again. That's characterization. Well, you know, you have you look at and I'm not changing poor mutoids, though. Seriously, poor old mutoid. mutoid. I mean, uh, yeah, is, is uh, asking about the mutoids, and he says the mutoids are disturbing. Discuss. Well, they're kind of like vampires. They're like, vampires. They yeah, they they need blood, don't they, in order to to stay alive? And they, they, to me, they kind of remind me of the sort of um, replicants. You know, that they're just kind of there for a short, limited lifespan, and right. that's it. You know. they're, they're another example of how corrupt the the Federation is. That they've turned a oh, bunch yeah. of people into these genetically modified. These, uh, right, they've taken normal people because because we've established, we find out that in Duel, we find out that mutoids were formerly had formerly had their own lives. And they were taken for whatever reason and turned into these creatures that that uh, can are more easily used mm -hmm. and controlled. Um, obviously, there are stormtroopers and things like that, and officers and all that stuff. But mutoids, well, I mean, they're, they're I don't know. People like monsters like Servalan decide they're easier to use. Mm -hmm. And manipulate, and it's just <clears throat> again, showing how they the Federation dehumanizes people, and so they are fascinating. They don't we don't get a lot of mutoid 
in terms of character development in the series other than that one in Duel. Mm-hmm. But we get enough to see that they are pretty interesting, even in... Uh, well, in it's, yeah, wow. I mean, it explains them. You know, you, you've got this sort of curious, well, you know, what the hell are they? And then that sort of explained it a lot more. And then they sort of became more background again. Then they became quite sparsely used, didn't they? Um, but I, I really like that that episode and I really liked her character. I, I, I think she got the short end of the stick, didn't she really? <clears throat> yeah, that's a great, yeah. And that's a great point uh, in terms of, again, when it comes to characterization again by Eastland Burkholder, you agree a three line character has personality in Blake seven. Yeah. Where a 50,000 line character on garbage, like STD or P hard or whatever has nothing but absolute garbage written in them and a lot and a lot of shows um a good example of that not to stray from blade seven too far but the bill burr scene in the latest episode of mandalorian is is that a masterpiece yeah i absolutely i absolutely love that 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 scene in 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 that canteen that's my favorite and you got the officers you know sort of dismissing you know the, the 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 and glorifying the deaths of 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 his comrade there and uh, he was holding it together. You could see that, you know, the the, the, the clock is ticking in his brain, and he he, uh, he takes oh, him out. You know, it's just like what a great oh, I'm not putting up with that shit. Fuck you. And that was a real that that showed his true character because before he was kind of a cardboard cut out villain, uh, and this this gave him a, a, a lease of life um, and That's earned him his freedom, and it, it was well earned, you know. That's the best bit of writing on that show so far. The, yeah, it's my favorite too. episode so far. Mine, mine as well. And again, that's the best bit of writing I've seen on that show. I liked the show fine, but I thought I always thought it was a little bit razor thin sometimes with this characterization. But you know, there's some good likable characters, but not really deep <clears throat> characters. That was one where they took a guy who, in his first episode, he was in was kind of just jokey. Bill Burr he was okay, and this one they really added depth to the character, and he carried the yeah. episode, and it was truly. Uh, truly great and like you say yes uh yeah if travis specifies a mutual aid requirement for his flagship due to their lord he says yeah he says i'll give uh i give a mutual aid priority over a man every time because he has something in common with them He's- and they're expendable and they're expendable it all comes down to, it comes Unlike down to Aiden, it's experience. not expendable you know <laughs> i'm not expendable i'm not stupid and i'm not good not going <laughs> i love it and uh, yes, it comes down to Ryan. Like I say, there's scenes in Blake Seven with characters that only last in a scene from. Or they're there for like two minutes, three minutes. Mm-hmm. Um, a prime example would be in Aftermath when uh, Richard Franklin, Mike Yates from Doctor Who, and another uh, couple of sort of like Ponzi uh, Federation, you know, uh, officers. You know, not like big tough guys. It was kind of like I don't know. You know, they were kind of just whippy dudes. But they'd mm-hmm. crash landed on on that planet, and uh, they were, they talk for a few minutes. That's all they do. They talk for a few minutes, and they are human beings. Yeah. You get this just with a couple of lines of dialogue, establish them are human beings, and then boom, they're dead. They get killed yeah. by a bunch of savages. You feel it more because if they were just like the normal, like just wearing the helmets with the, of the stormtroopers, and they landed, and they got shot or cl- uh, killed, or if they're red shirts, they just get blasted. There's nothing there. You feel it more. Yeah. Oh, it's like um, Killer, you know, the episode Killer. Love it. And you you, you got um, that uh, invisible killer that's going around the virus. And, you know, you, you've got you've got some really great characters in, in that that are only on screen for, you know, a blink of an eye. And um, you really sort of feel for their plight. You know, it's a, it's a really, really great character-based episode on that. Um, oh yeah, absolutely. You got great characterization, even for smaller characters. As a character, and you got uh, his former enemy. You know, the Avon's former enemy is uh, Tynus. Um, yes, absolutely. Yep. From uh, yeah, and you you see that, and I love that. You know, you got you delve into the character's history and uh, you know a bit of history and Avon's previous life. You know, where, how he ended up where he is, kind of thing. Uh, so Absolutely. Nice. Well, in Rumors of Death, mm-hmm. um, you have the two. Um, I really like the two characters that are the uh, the two. They're, and again, they're Federation, but they're they're the two uh, guards that the 
you know, section leader in the field major who are, mm -hmm. you know, they're on the security. If you remember, there, there's a couple of scenes with them talking about, you know, they're watching the, uh, I guess, uh, to the equivalent of the White House, whatever their damn, you know, Serverland's big uh, palatial estate is or whatever. Yeah. And um, there are like maybe three or four scenes or so with them talking and they talk like regular people. And mm -hmm. so when we see their fate, you feel it more because mm. they're, they're not just faceless creatures getting blasted in a shootout, which is fine. You have to have a little bit of that, but yeah, you make, again, it's so important for characterization that that just adds so much to a story. I, I, lo I love the relationship that Villa sort of built up with these, um, these troopers, you know, <laughs> like hanging out with them and stuff. And, uh, and, and getting to know them without the helmets on, you know, stuff like that. That's... You talked the one with Villa and um, uh, Moloch? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Again, not the greatest of episodes. But no, really, no, I mean, it was, really it was nice to stuff. see that. <clears throat> yes. Well, there's some really good Villa moments, especially there was, there was a fun Villa Serverland bit, which I loved in that episode. Because you don't see Villa and Serverland together ever, hardly. Mm. And that was kind of cool. That was kind of fun. Let's see. Yes. I like those two characters. Section leader. Some days are better than others. Section leader. And of course, that, that general, I mean, excuse me, that, that major. <clears throat> and then and then when he dies, was it <laughs> when Avon drops him and Taryn says, Avon, you really are a, tries to call him a bastard. Yes, I really am. So shut up and let me do what I came here to do. Avon, the bastard. Oh, he, Avon lives is so right there, Lord Toth. And again, we weren't trying to be spoiler when we spoilery to Noel or anybody when we kept saying Avon lives, but I, I can see why it sounded that way. But mm. we were just saying he lives because we love Paul Darrow and his character will live forever. Yes, absolutely. 100%. I mean, for me, Avon is one of the timeless, all time great characters and can never, ever be played by anyone else. Nev um, <clears throat> fucking. I, 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 I'm sort of on the on the fulcrum of you know if they did bring it back how it could work but you know my heart says no no <laughs> my brain is thinking i'd love to see it back but my mm. heart says it wouldn't feel right you know even if we were in the not in the age of the woke trash where you had to worry about that or that or, or was it going to be in the hands of morons like chibi or whatever even then oh if you named someone who's fairly competent that's done some good stuff i'd say like look i'm out blake seven is one thing to me remakes are bullshit anyway and even so like you know uh, for me um some certain things never be need to be remade and if you do it hey do what you gotta do I, i'm not in on it just leave me alone. i got mine nobody nobody can be avon or any of these other characters james t kirk anybody these characters and i, I talked about this a lot Characters from comic books or movies, you know, Superman, James Bond, Sherlock Holmes, Batman, whatever, can be played by anybody. In other words, I love Christopher Reeve as Superman, um, but obviously he can't play him forever. And he is based on a character from another medium. I love, you know, Connery and I love Timothy Dalton and Roger Moore. Different people being cast, these characters moving on from another thing is one thing. However, the characters on Star Trek, the original series, were co-created. Not only by Gene Roddenberry and the other writers, Dorothy Fontana and Gene L. Kuhn, they were also co-created by William Shatner and, and Leonard Nimoy and DeForest Kelly. In this case, Terry Nation and his, some of his writers and Gareth Thomas and Paul Darrow. These actors helped create these characters. Nobody can be them. And that's not the same thing as a literary character. Unless, unless they did a all. series in that universe, but... 30, 40 years oh, in yeah. the future. You know, new that, characters. Yeah, that, that could that could work, you know, as long as Chippenhill is involved. You know? New characters. Yeah, well, new <laughs> yeah. characters is one thing. I'm not necessarily yeah. opposed to I mean, to maybe you, you, you come across a bunch of uh, liberators who who uh, were inspired by what happened to, to Blake and uh, Avon, um, and, you know, they go on, um, they go on search for the, the planet where the liberator came from, you know, find it desolated, but they find uh, they find another ship, so they call it Liberator Two or something, and then they take it. Or you know, I mean, there's, there's different ways you could sort of do something like that. Or maybe uh, maybe the liberator wasn't truly destroyed. Maybe it was um, a mind trick played on the you know original crew, and it was actually stolen by the Federation. But 
because it was um and the crew were teleported off or something um and maybe the the original liberator is still there um but the uh the the federation couldn't <laughs> access it because the computer wouldn't then wouldn't allow it because it's all connected to the original crew and it's waiting for the right people to come and take it you know like but they're not it you know maybe maybe something i mean look it's so many ways you could do it you know uh See, I'm already so I'm just thinking on the fly, you know, you can, you can do all sorts of things, really. I mean, science fiction can do anything. But. Yeah, but when it comes to characters creating, and again, I'm only this way about characters created on TV, even movies that can make a certain exception, but on TV, because you've had like two seasons, four seasons, mm -hmm. eight seasons, or whatever, of a character created by <clears throat> that shows creators and writers and that actor. Uh, I can't just, I can't, I mean, certain shows like. Um, that terrible 1998 Avengers movie with uh, Ray Fiennes and Uma Thurman, for example. They're good actors. No, the movie sucks, but it doesn't matter. John's, it, it, Patrick Whitney is John Steed, period. Uh, it, 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 Diana Rigg is Emma Peel, period. Mm. Good actors don't matter. They are those characters. I grew up loving them that way. James Garner is Jim Rockford. I mean, go along the list. There's certain characters, they are. That actor is that character. Nobody needs to play them ever. Yeah, I mean, can you really imagine if they tried to, you know, to, I mean, it's like when they do, when they had Richard Herndl or, um, what's his face? Did, yeah, that's, uh, that I didn't mind. First doctor. Yeah, but can you imagine them doing that, the fourth doctor? No. Tom that's Baker the thing, isn't it? That, is the that's, fourth that, doctor. That's the thing. It's just like you, you can make certain allowances. Right. I'll give you an but, example. Yeah. Go ahead. No, well, if Sean Pertwee had, you know, in the Capaldi era, like played uh, his father's character because he's kind of, he can, he can get morph into that role, I wouldn't have minded too much. But nobody's ever going to be the fourth Doctor for Tom Baker. If that's making, there's that's only cool. one person who could play the third Doctor. It's Sean Pertwee, I know. But if they did it, I don't think I would have minded that much. Yeah, that's the, only, that that's the only exception. No one can do the fourth Doctor. No. <clears throat> no one can do the no. fifth of the sixth. I think what it stems from, I think, because... Hartnell was before, certainly before I was born, and because I grew up with Tom Baker and onwards, uh, I think it's because you have that connection in living memories. I, I, I think my father, for example, would never accept any other than William Hartnell, for example. I can't blame him. So I think there is that 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 thing. It's because you're connected because it's a childhood memory and it's it's imprinted on you from a young age. So you're going to defend that to the death. So I think that 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 is something that is probably explains explains that. You know, I think that's where it stems from. Yeah. I'm, oh, by the way, M, our buddy M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M M uh, every single person we met from Avon's past life has betrayed him <laughs> or is just about to betray him. Discuss with reference to, to his relationship with Blake. Well, without getting too much into spoilery stuff right there. Too um, late. <laughs> it, I mean, it's true. Without, well, it won't get specific. Um, well, I, think, yeah. I, think it, I think it's definitely a part of his character. I think it's, it's, it's informed his character. Um his personality. I think he is naturally suspicious. I think maybe he started off as an idealist because I think if you're going into science, like he, like he was, you know, in computer science, you, you, you're going to have all, uh, all kinds of grandiose ideas and altruistic ideas. And I think he got a uh, sh short thrift throughout, you know, he, he got absolutely screwed over multiple, multiple times and, and lo loved and lost. He's a, he's been a broken man and he's had to rebuild himself in his own image, I think. And I think that all those previous choices that led to all this terrible shit in his life has informed him to be very wary and very guarded and to see, look after himself. And I think he's lost his spirituality and became a hard-nosed capitalist, you know, really sort of, I'm just in this for myself now, screw everyone else. I can never, ever feel attached to anyone again. But I think with, with Blake, he starts off guarded against because he, he just feels, I'm going to be betrayed. And that's why, you know, I mean, we've already spotted, but I mean, towards the end, he's like, 
have you betrayed me? It's like, yeah. not again, you know, this you of all people have betrayed me. Um, yeah, that's not that ending. <sighs> yeah, and I think no. that 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 because I think he managed to overcome that, you know, to become more attached and and to start to believe and trust in Blake, and he you know goes to great lengths to try and find him yeah. because I think he does have that bond. He with believed him. He, Blake. He, he, he he dropped his guard I and mean, he kept it up. Yeah, sort of was... um, with the quips and then and the, the like slight you know backhanded way of saying things and but I think he he grew to believe in Blake. He believed. I think he really believed. He did. He, by the way, I believe the conflict within him. By the way, Vigilante Wilkins, uh, Wil Williamson, my good friend. Thanks for popping in, sir. Great to see you. Anyone who is, please uh, subscribe to Vigilante's channel. He's building a channel up now. I have a a, a link in my description below. Please check his channel out. It is a great one. He's a cool dude. Um, I think he, because of how he, he has his philosophy of not trusting anybody and scoffing at trust and things like that, I think he was almost angry with himself and angry with Blake because he did trust him. Yeah, he would rather not. 100%. And so, part of his inner turmoil, without again giving up too much, uh, you know, I think he was denying much, himself, you know, yeah, he, he, he denied had himself. himself. Yeah. But he, he, he loved Blake, uh, again, and he didn't want to – he hated that. He didn't want to be attached to anybody. Exactly. That's exactly. why I love the scene in Terminal, and this is – you know, you're not really spoiling that much. In Terminal, when uh, not too long after Rumors of Death, where they forced himself to go with him, in this one, I love the scene when he's finally going down. He says, one last thing. I don't need any of you. I needed the Liberator to bring me this far, but this is as far as I go. I don't want you with me. It's, I don't want you following me. Understand this. Anyone who does follow me, I'll kill them. And they believed it. Yeah. They and of course it's not true. It's not true. It's not. It true. shot at him though. But I like. Well, even what are you gonna it, look? If he if he shot them and missed, it he means said, he didn't want to kill them. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, but what Villa said to to, to uh, what Villa said to Terry said, "What are you gonna do with Avon Spot?" He says, "Duck." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because uh, Avon didn't like that he was attached to these people, but he mm. was attached to these people, which was one of the. Fun things about it, and he yeah, it's an internal it. conflict, definitely a lot of internal conflict. Well, you know, as uh, as a as Dana said about Avon, underneath that cold, harsh exterior beats a heart of pure stone. Although, do you think he would have flushed uh Villa out of that uh, no. out of that escape pod? You don't no. think he would have done? You know why? I, don't, I, don't, I believe he would have done. You know why I don't think he would have? Go on, because of the way he was acting. He was giving himself away by Phila. Time. No, it was Phila. Come on, trying to sweet talk him. Phila, I need your help. All that kind of stuff. That's not what he would be doing. He's smarter than that. He would have found some way. Oh, I've I got don't it. know. I think I, 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 I think he would. And I'll tell you. I'll, I'll tell you why. I think overriding everything is his instinct for survival, and I, I yeah. think that if it was came, if it came to push against shove, I think. He would have been like any any wounded or cornered animal. He yep. he would have just gone purely on instinct. No, I agree, but I think he was subconsciously giving himself away when the way he the way he approached it, saying Villa, come out. He's never sweet talk Villa. He talks to him like a piece of shit. But this time he's tried. Oh come on, Villa, 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 Villa felt that the fear yeah, in Villa ahead. was. Look, I think Villa knew that he was definitely going to die because I, it's yeah, just, he, I oh, he really did. do. I really do believe. I think because Villa is a, a, is a very sensitive person, and he would have picked up that this guy was not joking. <laughs> I really do no, think I, that even would have killed him. No, Villa had every every reason to believe that, but I mm. still think that he was. Two things can be true at the same time. I think he probably yeah. would have mm. found him, but I think he was also giving himself away by talk, sweet talking in the way he did. It's like, hmm. I don't know because he didn't. Well, I, I still think if push came to the shot, it, it pushed him yeah. shot, and he had to make a split decision in a second, he would have done it absolutely hundred percent. I love how he acted that scene. How when uh, when yeah. uh, when he says, "Damn it, what weighs seventy kilos?" and uh, Orak says, "Villa weighs seventy three <laughs> Avon," and his look on his face, he goes, "Villa." <laughs> uh, and, and of course. Like many episodes in that wonderful four season that I love more than most people, I realize. But I, even though there's some bad ones, every ending is so great and classic. When he basically it's a trip I won't forget, Ava. And he goes, "Well, you know what you always say, Villa." Harkening back to an early line in the episode, "You know you are safe with me." Oh, God. 
Mm-hmm. That snarl that he has, that yeah, <laughs> not be touched. Aldero was brilliant. Yeah, he's uh, one insupor- of my- unsurpassable. I mean, the, the man's a legend. You know, I mean, oh, he's so great. He, he he was wonderful. I, uh, this was the character he was born to play, and I, I think he knew that. And I think that he always respected that character. And I think he always played up to the fans, you know, with that. Um, from all the stories that I've heard and all all the sort of uh, uh, videos I've seen of him, uh, cons, he's uh, he absolutely lapped it up. Absolutely lapped it up, and. You know, I think he he's just such a a, a treasure. You know, it, it, for me, like I, I've said this before, for me, Tom Baker and the Fourth Doctor and Avon and uh, and Paul Darrow are neck and neck, the, the top of the pinnacle of my heroes. I think they those two are up there, neck and neck with each other. In and both of them were lightning in a bottle. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, you can't reproduce that in, in, under any circumstance. I mean, it's just once in a generation type thing. He's in my top three all time favorite TV characters. And oh, he's, he's, yeah, I mean, I love number him. one with Tom Baker. Yeah. I mean, it's just, it's fantastic. And again, he had a lot of other characters to work off of, which is great. And, you know, but this, mm-hmm. this one, and again, that's what's so tragic about the show that it's so under. I don't know, for lack of a better term, it's under-promoted. It's, uh, you know, not enough people have seen it's it. Wonderful. Enough. But in the way, it's, I'm glad, I'm, I'm glad because it, it, it's protected it for so long. If it had the kind of same level uh, of interest as Doctor Who, um, <clears throat> maybe we would be talking about how shit it is today, you know, and that I'd much rather yeah. be talking about how great it was then and how it's still great now. Um it, it, it's kind of been in a time capsule, you know, and it, it's, it, it has been protected because of that. And I think the fandom, the uh, the Blake Seven fandom, are lucky that they haven't gone through what's going currently going on in Doctor Who fandom right now. Um, and I think that that's a blessing in disguise. And I don't real, I don't think they realise how, exactly how lucky they are. Actually, that the, their fandom is is secure for the moment, at least until God forbid Chibnall ever takes hold of it. Um, I really hope that room is not true. That that would destroy my faith yeah. in humanity <laughs> at that point. Uh, you gotta, yeah. you gotta, you gotta get yourself prepared for it though, because you know it's the kind of crap that would happen today. And well, uh, we know, we yeah. know it's going to come back. And Dan said something quite cryptic to me today. Um, Dan from the Spacebook, check his channel out. Mm-hmm. Dan um, from Spacebook, everybody, great channel. Yeah, he's got a great. Um, Blake Seven podcast on YouTube and I would love uh, to talk on, to someday. on Spotify cool. as well. It's called Teleport. Um, yes. He does some great interviews on there. Definitely worth checking out. I, I did one with uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, I did one with him on there as well. It's great fun. Um, cool. But yeah, it, it, it's. Um, God, what was I saying? Uh, Avon. Something to do with Avon. Yeah, oh, God. I I think? So, oh, oh, no, we're talking about the. the 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 sad inevitability that may be well yeah that's it. Said something cryptic. He said, I think next year is going to be a big year for Blake Seven, and I thought, oh god, oh. and I, I, it kind of sunk in dread more than excitement because <laughs> I in the back right. of my mind I'm thinking oh. if there is an announcement that they're going to do something with Blake Seven, you know, it's going to be one of two things: it's going to be great or it's going to be fucking awful. Um, yeah, the worst it could get is Chris Chibnall or announces it's going to be a, a, a reboot. Um, oh best God. case scenario, they're going to do um, a new series based in that universe, and you know, whatever. And it, it's going to be called Blake Seven, but it's going to be like Blake Seven Next Generation or something. You know, <laughs> it's going to be different characters, but no Chibnall. That would be perfect. Um, I wouldn't have a problem with that. Um, and yeah. it would introduce people to the classic series and that would be great and it will get all the love it deserves. But I just pray to Buddha, God, Muhammad, whatever, everyone, <laughs> Darwin, you know, all of it. <laughs> the, it doesn't bring in this this woke 
crap and and the woke trash <laughs> fandom that that comes with it because that will just absolutely destroy it. Um, and unfortunately, current day and age, like ninety percent of the people coming out of university are turning out like this, and it's just fucking sad. And whenever they touch a fandom, it 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 it's like it just dis disintegrates in front of me and it's just awful to watch and they claim to love it and there's all this kind of fawning over it but it seems to be more of a sort of possessive thing where it's like it's ours now look how much it's ours and it's like i do not want this for blake seven uh I true I, I guess it's better to have it under the radar like you say and less people interested in it's, it it's more special that way i think you know? yeah i mean yeah, i'd love more people to to know about it and to watch it but i yeah. think that's incumbent upon us as individuals to to introduce it to people like i did with gary from no Grotic, like i did with Noel, and experiencing him watching it is is a joy because it's it's nice to know it's appreciated and loved and he's enjoyed it and it's so sad he got spoiled for him like i did for anyone who's just watching the stream and doesn't know anything about that <laughs> so but still go ahead and watch it. It's not about how it ends. It's the journey anyway. And the characters and the stories are so damn good that it shouldn't even matter. As I said, you know, when I first started watching it as a kid, I never saw the last episode. I was like, what, seven when it ended. So for me, it's like, it doesn't matter. You know, um, it was the ending was spoiled for me when I started watching it anyway like when i started watching it again with a fresh pair of eyes a few years ago yeah so uh, it it didn't spoil it for me anyway because i wanted to know why and how it happened so it doesn't matter it doesn't matter at all i mean just just watching even on screen interplaying with villa and servalan and it's so good you know so much so much love is there for these characters and I, I, I want everyone who's remotely interested in great science fiction to watch it who hasn't watched it and just go yeah i get what you're saying i love these characters i love these stories and that's what it that's what matters for me and, it, and, and some good news as well there is a um a guy uh, who's on twitter called um cult edge i think or edge cult mm -hmm. i can't remember which one it is now let me have a look uh our one high school <laughs> he's um he's actually working on a on producing a a, a blake seven 1982 annual oh yes because, wow yeah because there wasn't one right <laughs> there never was one um there was one for every other season of blake seven but never one for the fourth season oh man so oh, he's yeah. making one so he's I, asking people to, uh to contribute anything so i love those annuals those british annuals i have a few for doctor who yeah i wish to go judge dread that's a judge I mean, i've got i've got like tj hooker and uh um oh, knight rider and you know he-man and i've got loads of loads of annuals of those things no i had a bunch um, of the blake seven weekly magazine i had some of those nice so he's doing that i think he's i, I mean you can follow him on twitter let me just see if i can find um uh, and he's going to try to print this just like one of the old British annuals. Or the old, yeah. Uh, yeah. Old, oh, man, I want that. I got to have yeah, it. Right. I, I don't even have <laughs> it. I'll never probably be able to afford the other Blake 7 annuals. I don't know what they go for. but Well, I, I, I it's one. not as big as Doc 2. They might not be as, um, as expensive. Yeah, it's Cult Edge. So if you follow at Cult underscore Edge, mm -hmm. um, and you can find him there. I think his name's Graham. Mm -hmm. He was interviewed by Dan on the Space Book for his teleport podcast, so you can go and check that out. But the, this is this is a new development. So um, yeah, so he's saying we're excited to announce that two stories, which were written forty years ago, for the original sadly shelved nineteen eighty two annual, will finally see the light of day in the new Blake Seven annual wow. nineteen eighty two. Wow! So. So there you go. There's two original stories that were written 40 years ago for the annual, which never was produced and will be now published as a 1982 annual anew. So isn't that fabulous? That is amazing. To celebrate 40 years of Series D. There you go. I think that's that, wonderful. That's, 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 that's love and dedication right there. I think that's fabulous. No, absolutely. And so there were three annuals before that because I never... I never got those, man. Damn. For those who don't know, by the way, what a what a 
British annual is. Let's just, I will show you here. Um, what is happening? Have we gone? Have we gone dark? Just realised it. it <laughs> uh, I should vamp, vamp, vampity, vamp, vampy, vamp. So, does anyone have a question in the chat? There, give us a question. Let's let's hear what you gotta say. Hey, hello, you welcome. Sorry back. about that. My uh, my net blinked on me. God damn it. Darn. Oh. Crap. Sorry, everyone. <laughs> oh. I didn't realize. I just went to see um, what was happening with Noel there. Oh, how's Noel doing? Is he online? He's on, he's on, a, he's on a rant there, I think. Oh, we'll, we'll, uh, we'll finish up quick then again. You can get over there. Sure, um, yeah. I'm yeah, going to have to do for this one, I think. But yeah, carry um, on. No, I was so just... You, had a, you were looking for an image of an annual... Yeah, I, I actually found one. Then I, then I, I don't know. I lost it. I mean, but I have go, it now. Go to um, um, Twitter. There's a picture of um, the 1980 annual. Hold on. Let me just actually. I can do a screen share and show. I, I can show. I got a Google search up here. It's fine. We'll see here. Bzz, 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 bzz. <clears throat> Here's a link. I'll send you the link in the. I got. I, I already got one pulled up. You're good. Let's see. Uh, there we go. What in the hell? There we go. Now check the art. Check the artwork out for that one. Okay. I got to uh, go to Twitter though. I get all my windows <laughs> just shut off, shut down on me. Uh, uh, I could. I don't know if my net blinked or what it was. It was probably just me being stupid, which I'm good at. Uh, you said you sent me. You sent me one on Twit. Yeah, there's a link Twitter in what? the private chat. <laughs> Great picture of the Liberator. Hmm. In my in our private chat. Yep. Okay. Let's see. Twitter. Yeah. There we go. Oh, okay. I got you. Let's see here. Bzz, bzz, bzz. Come on, you slow ass. Oh yeah. Well, man. Let so me. in the annuals, you, you get like uh, stories, uh, you get like comic strips, you get, um, you know, puzzles, uh, pictures, you know, back, back uh, you know, production notes and backstage things and unseen pictures and all that kind of stuff. No, oh, okay. Uh, oh, hang on a second. Let me get rid of this. I knew something was wrong with this thing. Uh, I'm sorry, everyone. I'm, <laughs> I got the string block. Yeah. Oh, yeah. God damn it. So it's a book yeah. like that. It's, you know, but you can see the spine there, the red spine there. That's how thick it is. And um, yeah, it's it's always, it's a, it's a thing that you get every sort of Christmas, you know, as a kid back in the day. You get like a an annual on the thing that you like. So, you know, I mean, every year you get one for, for the new year. Nice. Those things were, they were like, I'm trying to explain I'm try, the, the format of these things. They were like hard covers. Hard, hard back book. Yeah. So it's about, um, it's about the size of a, uh, of a British comic book. Like I said, I only had like a couple of the Dr. Who ones and I have from the early eighties and of course some judge dread ones, but I've seen a bunch of them. I mean, they didn't, mm. as you, as of course you well know, they did it on a lot of, they did a lot of annuals and a lot of shows. Um, every, also, you know, you know, from sports to, Science fiction shows to you know girly things to British yes. comic books to TV, American TV things. shows that were popular here everything, right. everything. oh they I love them I love those annuals and things like that yeah. uh, let's see here Callie uh, Callie seven <laughs> Jenna and Callie and five Callie castrated seven. men well, yeah. <laughs> the transcendence of air. <laughs> That's pretty much the you got Chibi uh, nailed down there pretty good there, buddy. 
Would you recommend any of the big uh, Finnish Blake Sevens, you chaps? Um, I have only listened to some of the ones where they were the exact, the actual crew um, brought back. They were like made sort of to be like episodes that take place within episodes. Mm. I haven't listened to them all, but I've listened to a number. Of them. I have a, a number of them. Um, I've, I've listened to a few. Um, um, I kind of oh, recommend them. But I say I can't, I I recommend checking them out if you can get them cheap or something like that retro Dicky because it, it is the original crew. Some of them, they, this was before you know um, our uh, beloved uh, Garrett Thomas and, and um, Paul Darrow had passed. Now hmm. you do have to make some allowances. They are much older and they sound much older. You know people always yeah. look older, but you I mean I mean when, when Jacqueline Pierce was still al uh, alive and with us, you know, her voice sounded like she'd smoked like a billion cigars, you know. <laughs> yeah. That's really, really husky. But there's it. that. There was one episode that kind of bothered me because again, I'm a stickler for this sort of thing. It kind of didn't fit between the two episodes they were putting it between. It made no didn't make sense in that way. But they're fairly enjoyable because they are at least they're the real crew. So I mean I don't know you might want to check it out. Yeah, I mean I've I've listened to Liberation um yeah i think i was for that I, I think the spoils of war uh, i mean it's, there's some great i mean there's some really good ones um there's some sort of adequate ones um but they do sort of delve into some great stories and you know you've got your your favorite characters is there as well you've got um a different actor playing the part of um oh gosh i remember now uh of dana Dana, yeah, right. Brain, brain For some frozen. reason, that uh, Josette Simon uh, did not. Do yeah, it. she's actually really good. Yeah, you, know, you know, so it does seem right. You know, feels right. Now, apparently, she was a big fan of Blake Seven growing up herself. So that's that's always nice. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah I've listened to a few, but I didn't get past the ones with Blake. I know there were some later that took place that were like third take place inside of the third season. And these were stories set between episodes, sort of like the old Untold Tales of Spider-Man comic, where it took place between issues and stuff, and kind of going back. So I don't know. Um, they're okay. Like if you, you know, if you can find them relatively cheap, you remember, you, know, you might like them, man. You might, you know, I don't know. They're okay. Uh, yeah. Get used to their voices because I love those people so much. You know. Yeah. Um, let's see. Yeah, those old annuals are expensive. By the way, what is? In -in 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 says. Uh, what is Serverland's best outfit? Oh my god, are too many. I like the There's classic so white look, quite honestly. I mean, she had some yeah. really outrageous costumes. I mean, she looked like a tranny. <laughs> like a <laughs> you know, like a oh man, a transvestite, you know, not a not a transgender or a transsexual. So I just want to make that absolutely clear. Oh, of course. Like a, a, a transvestite. Um sweet transvestite. Yeah. I mean or or, or like a drag queen, you know, but uh, I like the classic white look. That that's how I remembered her as a kid, <laughs> you know. Really, so I mean, I was only like three or four or something when I started watching it, you know. But it was like it was the white image, you know, the white dress that, that I remembered most strongly, most vividly. Yeah, I don't know. Um, I guess. How do you pick? I mean, there's so many of them. She she was a fashion queen. She had different damn uh, outfits and everything. Mm. I mean, it, it, you know, uh, she had, I mean, I mean, she never wore the same thing. Whereas everyone else kind of did a little bit. Although they actually, it's not like Star Trek where they had the same uniforms all the time. But they, yeah. So I don't know how you would pick her. Yeah, because she is <laughs> wonderful. Oh my yeah. goodness. Well, what can you do? Oh, so uh, is Noel uh, as Noel's gone on now? Is he up up and running? Now? Yeah, he's, he's um, Cheryl's on on there, so I've got to go yeah. and show us. Yeah, man. Support. So I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah. Sorry I'm, about I'm, that. Gonna, I'm have to cut no, 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 but... I'm, dude. I'm glad you hung out. I just wanted to. I want just wanted to have a chance uh, just to do a little stream and hang out a little bit because it's been a while. We didn't yeah. uh, we didn't cover anything groundbreaking, ladies and gentlemen, and I'm sorry for that. But we had I had fun hanging with my buddy Problem Bing, and um, thank you, buddy. It's so a pleasure as always. In. It really is. And, you know, I hope we can talk more about Blake 7 and hopefully we'll get back to doing some more watch-alongs. I mean, we're near the end of season two, so we have to get back to watching it. I just have to convince Noel now that it is worth it. You know, have to get me yes, in Yes, absolutely. Please give – I'll be. I'll pop over there in a little bit, hopefully, when I get it. Cool. But, no, I'll, uh, I'll leave please... you to, to, to wrap it. I'll carry on if you want. <laughs> yes. Uh, oh, absolutely. But please uh, give Noel my best. 
and um, because I haven't seen him in a while, and uh, and Cheryl and all those people, and tell them I will, I will definitely see him soon. For sure, I hope. For sure. Thank you, well, everyone. Bobby. Thank you, Clobby and Probby. <laughs> Thanks, Clobby and Probby. So, so. <laughs> take care, my friend. Thank you take so care. much. Cheers, everyone in the chat. See you later. Bye bye. Thanks, man. Um. Yeah, well, I guess I'll close it up here tonight. I, well, tonight for you guys, from my British pals, is tonight. Of course, this is a daytime. It's two thirty in the afternoon for me, but you know, I kind of wanted to schedule it this way because you know, you know, probably has a lot of commitments. He's on a lot of shows, and it's you know, obviously, it's nighttime for him and his and his, and his friends over there and my friends over there. So, and I just wanted to, you know, we've had a couple times where we've got a chance to talk a lot of Blake Seven. Um. A vigilante, uh, he does have um, a channel where he does a few things. He doesn't do a regular stream or anything like that, but he's he goes on the TARDIS Zone channel a lot, our friend Noel. He does um, – he, he actually does really – if you go find his stream, and I, I don't have a – I you know, I need to put a link to that. I need to find – I'm going to find a link to that. Um, but vigilante, he has a – he does great – videos he's he does technical he makes intros and outros for people and things like that he does fantastic work problem being is a great friend and a great dude and he's just uh he's uh he was nice enough to come on here with me tonight for him tonight actually daytime for me like i said even though he's got a got a lot of commitments and he's on a lot of shows and stuff my good friend noel at the tardis zone who is of course on right now and i have there's a link in my description below to the tardis zone if you got any doctor who fans out there um but I want to thank everyone who, who joined me tonight. Uh, the amazing Lord Thoth, my good friend and the fellow, not only Blake 7 fan, but Legion of Superheroes fan. I want to thank uh, Eastland Burkholder for being here, as always. Retro Dicky, thank you for coming in. I appreciate it, my friend. I'll get that name right one day, my friend, but I really appreciate you being here. Uh, Vigilante Williamson, man, I appreciate you stopping by. I'm honored, sir. Thank you so much. I hope we can get together and talk again soon. And ha you know, and uh, you know, it doesn't have to be on Polly's. It could be over here or, or wherever, man. But I hope we get a chance to talk again, my friends. Captain Trek. Hey, buddy. Thanks a lot. Yes, we do need to talk some Trek again soon, my friend. Uh, again, I will be my Saturday nights. <clears throat> this Saturday night, I'm talking to the beautiful and wonderful Raquel Briggs about Star Trek. We're going to just do basically a, a sort of a chill stream about how much, you know, why we love Star Trek, some of our famous moments. And in January, Raquel and I will be on every Saturday night, we will be doing a regular Star Trek show. We're going to be uh, reviewing episodes and uh, we've got all kinds of things planned for it. Um, starting from the beginning, we're going to talk. You know, we love Star Trek and we love talking Star Trek. She is a beautiful, wonderful lady, brilliant lady. And uh, she is a lot of fun. I'm looking forward to that. And uh, again, I can't wait to get that started again. That'll be, well, again, we're doing it this Saturday, but then in January, we're going to start regularly. So that's going to be fun. But of course, I got plenty of comics uh, topics coming up as well. More Legion of Superheroes coming up. Um, my buddy Mark C and I will be reviewing comics soon. I don't know if it's going to be Monday or not. I got to check back with him. <clears throat> we're going to be reviewing Walt Simonson's Thor run soon. And a couple of other comments. We've got a lot of other things in Irons in the Fire there. There will be more Blake 7 talk. In hopefully my Retro Blasting buddy and I will be talking Doctor Who soon. The great Michael French on Retro Blasting. His channel and many others are linked in my description below. Again, a lot of great channels linked there. New channels, up and coming channels, building. Please, if you could, go give them your support. And go check them out. Uh, including my buddy uh, Vigilante Williamson there, who is, uh, again, he's just got over that 100 mark. Congratulations, sir. <clears throat> and uh, we all got to stick together and help each other's channels out. Uh, audio, oh, Audrey Audio Visual is problem being showcase channel for his tech stuff. Thank you so much. M -m 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 -m. I appreciate that. So anyone, please go check it out. I'm going to I'm gonna put a link in, but I'm, from now on, I'll have a link there. I totally forgot about that one. I have some links. Um, so, again, I want to thank you all for hanging out with me tonight. I'm going to run now because <clears throat> I've kept all you fine people here long enough, and I know you got things to do. So thanks a lot, everyone. Um, and, again, thanks to the great Stone Loki for this amazing out intro outro. Good, uh, good evening and good afternoon and good night to everyone. <laughs>